Our mission for the Gen 5 Viper was to build the best Viper yet. That's easy to say, but that's a real challenge from an engineering standpoint. In designing and developing the Gen 5 Viper, uh, we spent a lot of time early on. We've done market research, talked to guys that own competitive cars, asked, you know, what do they think about Viper? What would they like to see in a future Viper? More importantly, we've talked a lot and we talk continuously with the Viper Club of America owners. One question that's been asked a lot is, is the new Viper based on a Fiat or a Maserati or an Alpha 8C was speculated early on? Well, the truth is, of course, we looked at some of those options. It's always been a front mid-engine V10, and, and it's had a certain classic proportion that was essential to the car, right? The long hood, small cockpit appearance is, is a key part of what Viper is. Viper also has a very low cowl height, so the, the windshield sits very low, and the overall height of the vehicle is very low. And frankly, when we looked at some of the other platforms, they, they wouldn't work with, uh, for a Viper. So, so at the end of those studies, uh, the team realized we need to keep our unique space frame architecture underneath the Viper because it's lighter, it's stiffer, and it achieves uh, the essence of the Viper proportions that have always been there and were essential to the, to the looks of the Viper. A key objective in building a, a new Gen 5 Viper was to build the lightest Viper ever. How did we do this? Well, first of all, on the outside of the car, we've, uh, we've designed and added a bunch of new carbon fiber pieces. The biggest and the most visible piece is uh, we've added a carbon fiber hood, which is probably one of the biggest carbon pieces on a supercar today. Um, and it's a gorgeous clamshell piece that opens up and shows the, the beautiful engine compartment underneath. The roof is also carbon fiber, and so is the back lift gate. The new frame, and it is all new, uh, uses a combination of high strength steels, extruded aluminum, and cast magnesium components to create a frame that is 30 pounds lighter than the old frame and 50% stiffer than the old frame. So that gives you a lighter, faster car, but it also gives you a car with more that's a stiffer platform, so you have more confidence in the handling. And, and we think most buyers will immediately feel the stiffer frame and appreciate that when they drive Viper. Another key goal for the new Viper was to build the best handling supercar in the world. Uh, the key elements of that were, first of all, the much stiffer frame that we've put underneath the car. Number two was we spent a lot of time developing a new steering gear for the car, which gives significantly improved steering response. Number three, we've switched to the Pirelli tires, and we've been really impressed with what Pirelli has done for us. The Gen 5 SRT Viper uh, has a retuned passive system on the base car which has improved ride and improved handling. Viper GTS adds an all-new two-mode suspension, which allows us to provide for a softer ride on the street and better handling on the track. So inside the car, the goal was to build a modern Viper. And so what does that mean inside the Viper? It means modern components. It means a nice large screen navigation system. It means a new electronic cluster that has reconfigurability options that allow you as the driver to pick which cluster mode you want, what information you want to see, and you can pick when you see that. A big part of Viper, of course, is horsepower and racetrack performance. Um, Dick Winkles and the engine guys did a great job taking Viper to the next level. They've given us a significant power increase, 640 horsepower and 600 pound-feet of torque. A lot of our competitors talk about racetrack